Powell is with us again, talking about her newest book, Memories of the North. Now, did you find that poem that your other granddaughter wrote? Uh, the middle of August, 1967, in harvest time, my own wedding. Uh -huh. When the fields of grain were golden and the harvest moon was red, that's, that's the time. Now, listen, children, that granddad and I were wed. We didn't have much money, but we were young and strong. And we had a deep down feeling that we would surely get along. The morning of the wedding, the rain was falling down. And when the service started, the sun lit up my gown. And as it shone around us like a halo from above, the colored windows of the church sent out the colors we loved. And in the years that followed, our family grew and grew. Till now there are 50 or 60 grandkids, and that seems quite a few. And as I try to count them, all changes now so fast. There are all the summer coming, and I wonder, will it last? It all began, my children, on that morning, as I said, when the fields of grain were golden and the harvest moon was red. That's beautiful. Really? Yeah, the book so Yeah, that's in the one called Station in the Forest. That is right. That's a very beautiful poem. Yes. And, uh, I don't know how you do this. I guess there must be a gift to that, you know, uh, to writing like that. Well, that is, uh, they set my family. That is the nicest thing in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can say things that are in your heart. To me, I hated to leave my house this morning because I've got my boxes of books there. Mm -hmm. And I had to talk to my husband that he would be very careful what if my books would burn if I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you left, though, because uh, oh. this way so well, many yes, people... Yes, I have to go sometime. That's and, you know, you and I think you're you're a little bit stuck on me. I mean, you know, you want to come and see me, you know. <laughs> yeah, but I think you're right. a lot younger than I am. I well, would. I better say she is. Oh, you did really kill me. <laughs> and you have two children. The two children, right. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we're going to be back in a minute, Norma, oh. and we'll talk about some more of your poetry. <clears throat> poetry. No, that's fine. Of course, it isn't my poetry. I'm just taking from other Very poetry. fine. Oh. I want to talk a little more about that log house, though. How many years oh. did you live in there? How many years were you there? Oh, I was there 20 years. 20 years. Was it just a one room or a two Oh, rooms? no, I had more room there than I had in the new house. Really? Yeah. Well, darn. I suppose you didn't have all the conveniences, though. You know, you didn't well, have indoor was, plumbing I and all that. I never had enough water, you know. And never had enough water. Huh? Now, this is uh, called Left Behind. The old log house, you, am, am I ready to read now? Oh, of uh, course. The old log house is falling down and it stood there many years. And now when I go over there, I'm almost moved to tears. It was our home for 20 years. How fast time slipped away. I remember well the day we came, a rainy, cold fall day. We didn't mind the rain or cold. We had a home of our own. Three little children we had then, all boys who now are grown. And as the years went swiftly by, three more did bring us care. Three and three make six, you see. They all were very dear. The birds now cling. The little orchard still stands there as though to guard the home. My children played beneath those trees. I watched. They did not roam. The birds now claim the place their own. No strangers do come near. They build their nests just where they will. There is no one there to fear. The woods have crept up closer to almost hide the home. It's standing there deserted so very much alone. The shingles on the little roof, my father's mill did cut. Just how they lasted all these years, it may have been just luck. The roof now has fallen in. The floors are out of shape. A heap of boards and heartaches that only time can make. I now live in a better home. It is not quite as bare, but when I left the little home, part of my heart stayed there. And... Uh, Hmm. Let's see, there's more to that here. Oh, that's lost again. Did you lose the last part? Oh, well, I can leave it off. Poem. It's long enough. That's a and I wanted poem. to say something here to our soldier boys, if I can find it again. I had a minute ago. And, uh, well, these are rather big books. It's pretty hard to keep track oh, of that yes. poem, but you and, know. Uh, oh, yes, here it is. Thoughts of our soldier boys, or of our boys, rather. In this poem, she, uh, now this is me talking, see, my granddaughter gave this in as a, as a description of me. 
In this poem, she is talking about my cousin Mike. The reason she wrote this poem was because he had taken a few of her poems to school. The children liked them, but the boys in the class asked how come she never wrote about space. This poem is her way of answering the question of why she doesn't write about space. She realizes that the minds of our boys today are interested in more than just nature and the beauty around them, which seems to be her whole life. She realized that she really couldn't write about space the way she does about nature. The reason she doesn't write about space is because she doesn't understand it as she does the nature and people around her. She will leave writing about space to the next generation who will understand it better than she does. And, uh, well, I guess that's enough of it anyway. And How do you, uh, or how did you bring up your children? I mean, how do you think parents should bring up their children? Well, I don't know. I mean, do you have any secrets to pass along? None at all. I didn't do any better than anybody else. Oh, I think you did pretty no, well. No, I don't think I did any worse, but <laughs> I'm just an average person, an average uh-huh. house. And, mm-hmm. and you had six children. Yes. So was that kind of rough on you, I mean, or do you think large families well, are you know, easy? when you have six children and you live on a little farm, those children are busy a lot of times. They're playing and they're busy, and they do not bother you. And if one would be sick, then you are bothered. Yeah. But you, they don't have time for mischief, too much mischief, do they? Well, there's no mischief. It's when you own <laughs> all around, yeah. many parties around. You're, it's all your own, you know. Yeah, right. right. And right. they do as they want. And, uh, okay, well, I thought I'd get your ideas on that. Yes, and, uh, yes. You have some other poems, too, I want to hear about. Well, actually, first, I, uh, could you wait one I minute, want okay? To, yes, okay. I have never yet. Just wait one second. I'll be back, okay? You, Norma Terry in here, did you find the poem you wanted? Yes, I, uh, so far, see... I never wrote the, or read anything for the children. And now this is for the children, although the season isn't just right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, this is for the little children that are listening in. I'd like to live with Santa way up in Santa's land. I'd have so many playthings, and life would be so grand. I wouldn't have to go to school or hear the grown folks say, Now you be good, because you know it'll soon be Christmas Day. Each day would be like Christmas, new toys each morning bright. So I would get up early, and I would get up early before the day was light. I wouldn't hang my stockings up. I'd use a great big sack, and I would fill it up myself right out of Santa's hat. I wouldn't trim a Christmas tree, no time for things like that. And every, anyway, why bother when I could have the whole big pack? I'd have the nicest sled of all to slide down snowy hills, and I would have a nice gun, too, a gun that really kills. I'd like to drive his reindeer. I'd call them all by name. I'd put poor Rudolph in the lead. He's the dear of fame. I'd fly in Santa's airplane. I'd go way up so high. And all that you would see of me would be something passing by. That was written in 1965. Mm, I, bet you, I bet you that's how children feel, too, don't they? Yes, uh, that poem uh, could go most any place. Mm-hmm. I have had calls for it in how did you uh, compile these poems now for this Memories of the North? These are written different years, aren't they? So you, you... Well, I like to put the years there more for my own convenience, I guess, than anything. And uh, How do you, you save them in a box or a book and then you put them all together? Or how do you do that? You know? I have a chest of my own, a oh. very nice one, and many drawers. And it is quite old, but it is strong and it's pretty and I love it and it is not mine. Oh. And that's where you keep your poems. I keep my books and my poems. And uh, how many uh, years have you been writing poetry now? Well, as, as I can think back, since I went to school, grade school, you mean, or uh, begins kindergarten? Oh, you school in the started country. young then, didn't you? That is right. And uh, of course, I wouldn't let people see them, you know. And uh, well, I I don't know. <laughs> Some of them, I suppose, were pretty funny. And, uh, well, I don't know, though. I think maybe you thought so, but I bet you others would have liked them. Well, you know? not when I was so small. And uh, now, in the back of this book, I don't know if I should mention it, but there is some writing there by Linda Carrion, who is one of my granddaughters. And she didn't know it was going to be there, and I didn't. The editor, the publisher, found that I'm with my papers, and he put it in. And I think she is quite talented. It is very nice, and... Uh, 
I'm not going to read it. It's very long, but when you read the book, you'll see. All right, that's toward the back of the book. Yes, and uh, it is very well written, and the publisher <laughs> didn't change a word of it. So I think that she uh, has quite a lot of talent. Here. How old is she? Is she, she must be 20. 20. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll have to look for that, too, when we buy the book called Memories of the North. Oh, yeah. yes, and uh, she describes me better than I could do it myself when I first <laughs> read it. The publisher sent the, the things to me corrected. When I ran across that, I kept looking at it, and I thought, well, that's me all right, better than I could do it sure. myself. Well, it's always easier and for someone else to, to do that. she didn't to be published, although mm-hmm. she did get a scholarship and, uh, for her, uh, her writing. Mm. It's always easier for someone else to describe us, though, because they well, see us know, differently. I pretty, near, pretty much know just how I am. Well, but maybe others see you. A different. little differently, different. you know, right? That's right. Yeah. I guess we're all the same like that. Although with you, it's easier to know you because you write poetry and they well, can see how you are they, from they, that. They read my mind by it. Yeah, that's what I mean. And, uh, well, you're a very nice lady. Well, thank you very, very much. Nice. I think you're pretty fine yourself. Oh, come on. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. We're pitting roses on each other. <laughs> okay, I'll be back. John's pretty fine when he, I need his help I around. Think so too. I'll be back in a minute, okay? Us today is Mrs. Norma Terrian of Cornell, who is the author of poetry, and her newest book is called Memories of the North. And I just.